All right, in this video, we're going to set up your new appointment schedule on Google Calendar. First of all, you're going to need a computer because this can't be done on the mobile app just yet. So on a computer, open Google Calendar, calendar.google.com. And at the top left, click on the Create button. Uh, you may not see all these options depending on what type of Google Workspace subscription you have. But as long as you've got Business Standard or Business Plus, you will see Appointment Schedule. So click on that and then enter a title. This will be the title that shows up in your booking page link. So make it something meaningful and not something too silly like Test of Appointment Schedule. Then set your appointment duration. Now by default, it's set for one hour. But the minimum you can set it for is 15 minutes. You can also set it for longer than the drop down here by using custom. And in fact, you can go all the way up to 23 hours and 25 minutes, but I'm not quite sure why you would want to do that. So, but if you were to set, set it for example, eight hours, you can see here that you'll end up with the whole day being booked out. I'm going to leave it at 30 minutes and you can see it's starting to update here. So these are the slots that are being scheduled or being made available at the moment. You then can set your general availability and by default it come, it's set from 9am till 5pm Monday to Friday. You can change these just by clicking in to the text field and either select a different time here or if you've got a very specific time for example maybe you want 8 15 to start then just type that in as appropriate you can then copy it all the way down quite easily by clicking on this icon here maybe you don't want to be available at all on Tuesdays so just click on there and for every Tuesday, it'll mark you as unavailable from now on. If you wanted to be available on Saturday, you can obviously add that as well. And by it'll do the default time there, just copy it down to make it the same time. If you wanted to break up the period, so you don't just have one big block there, you can also add different times. So maybe you wanted to have a break for dinner or going to the gym or something, you can then add a bit later without having to block this off with an actual event. Scrolling down a little bit, you can see this scheduling window. This allows you to set how far in advance appointments can be booked. So by default, it says you can book from immediately, but no more than 60 days out and no less than four hours. So if somebody, we're looking at it's currently August 2023, so you can't book any later than October 2023 at the moment with this default, but you can change it if you wanted to. So you could make it a longer period or you could make it a shorter window there. And similarly here, I find uh, because I work with people in different time zones, it's good to block this a little bit more. I don't want people to be booking me within four hours because I might be asleep. Um, adjusted availability. So this essentially says that perhaps, you know, you want to block out a specific day. It might be a public holiday or something like that. And you, so you just say, okay, I'm not available on the 31st of August. Um, and you can just say, I'm not available at all that day. So again, the Tuesday is already blocked out because we'd said that on this particular day, August the th uh, Thursday the 31st is not available. But if I go over to the next week, you can see Thursday the 7th of September is available. All right, so the next option that you can change here is buffer time and maximum bookings per day. So if you select this one, you can set a buffer time between appointment slots. By default, that's 30 minutes. So you can see how this is amending it now. 
I'll go back to today, you can see that it's now not allowing bookings within 30 minutes of the, the time that I've set. So it does cut down on the number of bookings that you can take per day. You can break that down. You can also make it per hour. Obviously, 30 hours is not going to work if we did buffer time of an hour. That's going to make it um, a lot shorter as well, the number of appointments that you can take. I'm going to take it back to 30 minutes. Now, something just to be aware of is the buffer time is only for appointment schedules. It doesn't take into account if you have an event on your calendar already. So let's say you've got an appointment schedule here, and then there's an event that's been booked from nine o'clock for some reason, some other meeting that you've got. Google won't look at that when calculating the buffer time. It will only look at appointment schedule for buffer time. The final option here is how many bookings per day do you want to take? So if you didn't have buffer time, you've got um, the full day there. You could say, all right, I just want to have four bookings a day. So all the time is still available, but once four bookings have been made, all the other times will disappear. If you add that, combine that with buffer time, it does give you a good way of managing your day and your availability. If you click on calendars checked for availability, this gives you the option to select secondary calendars. So if you subscribe to other calendars or you've set up your own secondary calendars and you select these, then Google will check these other calendars for availability. But by default, it will always check your primary calendar and you can't change that one. You can then change the color if you want. So in this case, you can see I've set up some labels, but you may not see labels depending on your Google Workspace subscription. Um, but you can check what one of the 11 uh, event colors if you want, so that when an appointment is made, it'll come up in a different color to your normal calendar. So we'll just select that one. Oh, lovely. Um, we'll now click on next. And what you'll see here is um, some of the variables about what people will see when they go to your booking page. So by default, people will see your profile name and photo. You if you change this in Google account, as it suggests here, that will change everywhere. So I, I wouldn't think you can change it just for appointment schedule. You can't. It will change wherever somebody sees your profile photo. You can then choose um, how people will meet you, whether that's uh, via a Google Meet video call, which I obviously do a lot. You can specify a meeting location. You can have um, a phone call um, or you can specify it later. So if you specify this, then as soon as somebody books, they will get a Google Meet video call link. In person, you need to set the location. Alternatively, somebody can do a phone call and they need to provide their phone number when they make the booking or if you want to leave it quite flexible, just leave it as the final option there. You can then add a description. This is what people will see. Don't go too overboard. There's a limit to what people can see without scrolling on the booking page. Um, and so just keep it very simple, maybe just a little bit of instructions. This will also come in the confirmation email. So again, make it something meaningful for people, but don't go into too much detail. You can then see on the booking form, you can customize this. So only some of these. So first name, surname, and email address are required. These are always going to be part of the booking process. Phone number has come up because previously I selected that the phone call would be used, but you don't need to have that. You can remove that. Um, or you can add a couple of items here. Again, you can add a phone number or a custom item. Maybe, for example, um, 
you've got uh, some comments on what you want to achieve. And you can make that required. And then when people book, they need to put some comments into that field before the booking will be accepted. Um, you can also require email verification. This is a good one if you're worried about um, spam bots. Uh, require email verification. It also means that somebody can't put in a fake email address you, that you can't then contact them on later. Now, payments and cancellation policy. So if you have connected to Stripe, you can require payment when booking. I'm not going to go into Stripe and payments right now, but you can see that it's an option to require payment when booking. Um, okay, so we'll use payment over email verification. And this is by US dollars by default. So make sure you select your local one. Otherwise, you could end up over or well, usually overcharging people, I guess. So let's say we're just going to say that's $25, not $250. Thank you very much. I will just get that $25. There we go. Um, and again, if you have a cancellation policy or refunds, type. And then finally, booking confirmations and reminders. So by default, you get a normal calendar invitation, exactly the same way as it is for any Google Calendar invite. You can also set automatic email reminders. So by default, that'll be sent one day before. You can change it, obviously. There's a drop down there or can set a custom set of reminders. Um, and you can add up to five reminders here. So it depends on how much you, you think somebody needs reminding. This can only be done via email. There's no option for text messaging or any other app notification. It's only via email at this time. And if you don't want to send any emails automatically, just deselect that. Once you've made all these changes, just click on save. So you can see here you've got your bookable appointment schedule with some options to share and open a booking page. So if we open the booking page, you're seeing yourself and you can see here the times that we've set up. Sundays are not available. Mondays are available. And you can, there's crosses here or strike throughs on dates where you're, you're not available for booking. So you remember we said Tuesdays never available. Thursday the 31st, um, not available, but other Thursdays, yes. And you can see this is what we put into the description. It shows how much it is. If you wanted to see what other people see, click on that link there. And you can see, again, this is exactly what, what they're seeing. Um, it is set by default to their own time zone. So these times are all local to the individual who's viewing your booking page. If you want to share this, go back here, you can click on share here and you can send it as a single booking page, which is just that link there. So you can just copy that and send it in an email, tell people to click on that link to make a, a booking with you. Um, or you can Embed it on your website. So you can have a button with a pop-up, which looks like this. Very limited formatting that's available. It is not going to change dramatically from this look and feel. You can get different colors, but if you've got a very specific look and feel on your website, this might be too simplistic for you. But you can see you get book an appointment. You can change that time, click on there to test it. And there you go. This is what people see. Close that down, make a different color because I can. Um, or so you just copy that code and add it to the HTML of your website. Alternatively, if you wanted to reduce the friction, so this is a couple of steps for people to book an appointment with you. 
you can use the inline booking page and copy the code and then the actual calendar will that booking page that we've already seen here will be embedded on your website in the, rather than a button to book an appointment.